If you need any Xbox or PlayStation codes or anything gaming related, check the referral links down in the description. They'll take you to G2A.com. They already have a discount on most of their goods already. And with the code CHES at checkout, you can get yourself an extra 3% off as well. Hey guys, how's it going? Chez back again and welcome to episode number 105 of the Career Mode Road to Glory here on FIFA 15. We start with the last game of our debut season in the Barclays Premier League. Away from home with the Etihad. Not the easiest, although as you can see, Manchester City are uh, only going to finish as high as second. Man United have already won the league, but uh, they need to get a victory here to guarantee themselves second place. Because if we beat them and Chelsea then win their game, they'll drop to third and they may even drop to fourth. I didn't quite see what the points gap was between Chelsea in third and the team just behind them but they're starting a very strong lineup as you might expect as am I as you might expect as well on the final day we've got a almost a full strength side out obviously we're missing a couple of our central midfielders through injury unfortunately like uh, Aguadar unfortunately and Michael Woods as well with a broken toe so uh, obviously we're missing uh, Zafane as well the right back out for seven months with uh, an ACL tear unfortunately so we do have Bayerin uh, coming in at right back, the on loan uh, defender from Arsenal. And actually, unfortunately, it was at his spot of right back that we ended up conceding the first goal. We go 1 0 down uh, after 16 minutes or so, which is a disappointing start. But obviously, Manchester City, second in the league, it's not going to be an easy game by any stretch, is it? We actually had a very good game against them at home earlier on in the season. I believe we came away with a draw. And now, uh, obviously, we'll try and at least replicate that here, if not improve on it. But Cassida gets a decent chance here, just trying to get his uh, sights set on goal. And unfortunately, this time, not quite able to find the top corner. Decent effort, but, uh, you know, not quite got his accuracy on point. Zuccolini had his shot on target, but uh, was straight at Galese's legs, unfortunately, for him. So we stay 1-0 down at present, but continuing to try and get ourselves back in it here. As you can see, Caseda this time on target with the shot. But uh, Willy Caballero was on hand to uh, make a good save to palm it over the top. Still not done for the first half, though. They're trying to get themselves a second goal if they can to try and guarantee themselves, uh, you know, that all three points here and that second place in the league but again goalkeepers seem to be on top here Pedro Galese when called upon apart from the first goal has been very very solid and uh, Willy Caballero has been solid for them so far as we head into the second half obviously as you might expect Manchester City continuing on with uh, the pressure and unfortunately they are going to get the second goal there Jovetic just destroys the defender at the back post to make it Man City 2 Cambridge nil. but we're continuing to come forward we won't give up we've got had a never say die attitude so far this season and that's half the reason why we are where we are in the league sat there mid-table and a very competitive opening season in the Barclays Premier League Cassidy with another good chance there again though unfortunately not able to find the target which was disappointing but we brought on, Sen brought on the Senorelli and uh, Christian Panier to try and freshen things up in the middle and out wide in our midfield four to uh, fingers crossed get ourselves at least one back if not get a second if we possibly could George Evan Cassidy linking up here then Jenkins Chikawi gets on in the axe turns inside with a nice step over and actually that's a very impressive side foot finish across the goal into the bottom corner which unfortunately was only going to be as far as we got in the game that was our one shot on target all game we scored it but it wasn't enough to get us the win so that was the final game of the season done and dusted and we'll head now into a final live season roundup so I've advanced then all the way until the end of the season so we can have a quick roundup. We'll have a look at how things went down in our domestic league, how things went down in Europe, have a quick look at team stats and uh, we'll do another squad report because of course we have advanced another month so uh, ratings will have updated and then we'll head into the, uh, the fifth season and uh, of course have a transfer targets video for the next episode. One thing to point out though, we have actually been given £5.1 million for uh, finishing where we did in the Barclays P uh, Premier League, which was of course in 10th position. Now what I'm going to do with this money, I'll put it all into the transfer budget, as you can see 6.5 million total now. What I'm actually going to do, what I want to do, is uh, get a top quality scout, which uh, apparently I can't afford right now. So um, what I might do is actually just reload the save a couple of times and uh, get different scouts here. That's the plan, but obviously other things will remain unchanged. But uh, before I advance, I'll reload the uh, the save on this particular day and try and get a couple different scouts because it does actually re renew the scouts uh, if you uh, if you do that. So we'll uh, we'll try and spend that money on a decent youth scout. So hopefully we can get some really top quality youth players coming through the academy. And fingers crossed we can get a decent budget for next season as well. But we'll have a look at the league table as you can see. Manchester United won the league, and Man City did in fact need to get that. 
victory over us to finish in uh, second. Had they lost against us, or even only drawn against us, Chelsea would have uh, finished above them. But in fact, the uh, the blue side from Southwest London finished in third, with Spurs getting the fourth and final Champions League spot. Liverpool getting into the Europa League. Unfortunately for Everton and Arsenal, they miss out on European competition for next season. We, though, finished a very respectable fifth place, so I am pleased with that. And unfortunately for Watford, Norwich and Burnley, they will be leaving us and uh, won't be playing in the Barclays Premier League next season. Villa survive as well as West Ham and Newcastle all on 40 points there. So that could have been quite close for the relegation battle. Arsenal win the FA Cup with a 2-1 win over Man United. So they're not able to do the double. And Southampton won the Capital One Cup there with uh, a 2-1 win over Stoke. As you can see, Juve won the Copa Europa or the European Super Cup. And we'll have a quick look at the Champions League as well as uh, the Europa League. If it doesn't freeze on me, hopefully it won't. Although it does look like it is going to. So I will cut back in a minute, reload the save. Maybe we'll actually be able to have a look at the Youth Scouts. And uh, then I'll come back. Oh, FIFA, it does this every year. I don't know why I keep trying. <laughs> Okay, so I've reloaded, as you can see, and uh, I've actually uh, bought two scouts. We uh, were able to get some fresh scouts by uh, actually reloading the, reloading the save, so it worked in my favour, I guess, in the long run. We've picked up Jose Ramirez from uh, Spain and also uh, Lika or Lika uh, Simula, a Finnish scout. Unfortunately, not quite as good as Jose Ramirez. Uh, he cost me about four million, and uh, Simula cost me about one and a half. So as you can see, top right, my budget is only 1.3 million now, but uh, obviously they will come in handy at the start of next season when it comes to uh, to picking up some good youth talent unfortunately I can't check to see um who won the Champions League and the Europa League it just it's frozen on me a couple of times now so unfortunately again for like the third or fourth season in a row I haven't been able to show you that because the game just breaks on me but regardless let's have a look and see who got the top goal score award it was in fact Edinson Cavani at Chelsea it was Quirker the uh, or Quake I still don't know how to pronounce that the uh, the guy from Stoke City that got second then Rooney Connor Wickham with 13 goals for Derby as well as Lukaku and Andre Scherler getting 13 Cassida was our highest goal scorer as you can see there 10th with 11 goals we'll have a look for uh, any other other of our players in there. Georgiev just makes the top 25 with eight goals. Assist-wise, uh, any Cambridge United players in there, not in the top 15. Remy Cabea gets the uh, most assists by uh, seven ahead of Stephen. Well, loads of players on six. Anyone else? Spooler, Nicholas Spooler, our youngster speedy winger, gets five assists for the season out wide. Any other Cambridge United players? No, unfortunately not. But we had a decent year, actually. I'm very I'm very pleased with our uh, debut year in the Barclays Premier League. As you can see, we've got 1.3 million left over. Hopefully, that because we've got some money left in the bank, that will mean we get a decent budget next season. I'm not sure. I don't know how it's going to go. Obviously, we had an atrocious budget at the start of this year in the BPL, but fingers crossed they'll actually give me some uh, a, you know, a decent wage budget to work from now that we've actually consolidated ourselves in the uh, the Barclays Premier League. Uh, let me just quickly check my archives in my thing to see. No, it's just I wasn't sure whether I had anything archived so that I uh, could show you it, but I'll uh, I'll do that for when we get into the transfer targets video for Friday's episode. I'll uh, I'll archive the video the uh, the messages of like you know season expectations and transfer budget and uh, you know what they thought of uh, this particular season, the season review type stuff. But we'll end with a squad report then at the end of our fifth season here in the BPL, and uh, we'll show you how everybody got on. Uh, pe do I sort? Now I'll leave it as is. I was going to sort sort by position, but sometimes that uh, resets the little green bit. As you can see there for Pedro Glace, it says plus three. Sometimes it will still say seventy one, but it removes the plus three so we'll leave it as is for now 16 clean seats for Pedro Galese in 41 games really pleased with the way he's grown so far plus four on all of his stats that are important but only plus three overall but still valued at 1.3 million now has been highly sought after recently but fingers crossed we can keep hold of him next season Hector Bayerin on loan for us this year growing nicely may look to bring him in again obviously because Zafane is going to be out for seven months with a torn ACL Paul Downing continues to grow very nicely indeed. No goals for him this season, unfortunately, but 12 clean sheets in 34 games. Pleased with him. 76 rated as our second or third highest rated player in the entire squad. Uh, Cardosa came in uh, mid-season, I think, this year and has done quite well. Gone up one rating as well, so pleased with that. Should continue to grow for an extra season or two before dropping. Uh, Ivan Santian is uh, continuing to grow, although I'm probably going to look to try and replace him if possible. Tinkins Chikawi, our young scout future stars, raised up to 78 overall now and valued at £5 million, up from 77 and 3.5 at the start of this season. Two assists and two goals for him this season. 
would have expected a lot more really, but uh, still continuing to grow and uh, obviously we had a big offer from Man United in for him and we turned that down. We'll have to wait and see if we get any offers for him next season. Ryan Donaldson has been in the first team recently because of injuries, but I am hoping to move him on. He is transfer listed as you can see there and he is unhappy at the club and we'll try and get him out the door if we can. Uh, Gabby Adini was one of the youngsters we brought in, has been growing quite nicely. Not the uh, best of players, but a decent squad rotation player and uh, is growing nicely. So at the age of 21, plenty of growth left in him. Nicholas Spaller, 77 rated now, up two since we brought him in. Still absolutely rapid. He's got five assists and three goals so far this season, or in total this season because there aren't any more games. But dribbling of 84, acceleration of 95, sprint speed and balance of 93 and agility of 84, meaning he is an extremely good and vital player to our first team layout. Uh, Strail Georgiev has actually gone up four ratings. Really pleased with the growth of this guy. Came in as one of the youngsters at the beginning of the year as well alongside Kevin Schmidt and Georgiev has thrived with first team football only scored eight goals and gotten four assists in the BPL but still really pleased with him and hopefully he can continue to grow, especially considering he's still only 19 years of age. Fabian Cassida was our top goal scorer this season I believe with in all competitions with 12 goals and four assists up two ratings to 71 still some more growth in him I think between now and uh, the end of the series the end of FIFA 15 because the plan is for this series to run the entire length of the year uh, Kevin Schmidt has grown a little bit as well not seen too much football but three goals in seven games or 11 games total for him is quite pleasing considering he hasn't had that much uh, football at all so uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens with him in the next season or so. Salah Solomon's unhappy at the lack of first team football at present, but obviously Cardosa and uh, Paul Downing are my first two starting centre backs, but he's been playing okay and uh, still growing in the right places. You can see plus five um, in uh, stand tackle and sliding and in uh, marking plus four as well. So he's up two overall. Senorelli has been a good rotation player for us. Uh, obviously, we've got quite a deep squad when it comes to player numbers, but not really a deep squad when it comes to quality in that depth. Luke Berry came in as a, a free agent or kind of a pre-contract signing this year. Unfortunately, there are no players that I can tell that are available on pre-contract this year. I've been having my scouts out looking for players that are running out of contracts. They just, it, they're, they've come back with a few that are running out of contract, but he won't let me sign them on a pre-contract. I'm not really too sure why. I'm not sure whether I had to do it in the January transfer window, but I don't, I, I'm pretty sure we got, uh, other players post tra January transfer window on pre-contract before but never mind maybe I'll have to bear that in mind when we get to the January transfer window in the next season Christian Panier has been a good rotation player again for us very very fast once he eventually gets up to that sprint speed of 90 got two assists in his 16 games Greg Taylor not much football for him but he's not expecting much football and a pretty average player uh, Just had to do a little cut there because there were some people going past my window that were ridiculously loud and my mic was actually picking them up. There's probably, I don't know, a 15 foot gap between my window, then the edge of the garden, the hedge and then the path the other side and my mic was still picking them up. That's how loud they were being. Regardless, let's continue. Uh, Juan Carlos Arce is actually leaving us this year. He's retiring at the end of the season. Good riddance. He's never played once for me. I didn't want him and it glitched him into my squad. So we're uh, pleased to see the back of him. Tom Elliott, I'm still trying to move on and we haven't been able to so far. But he actually got two assists in the one game he played in the BPL this season. So fair play. Uh, Aquadar is our youngster that we brought in. We brought in him alongside Gabi Adini, And he's grown a lot better than Gabi Adini did. Worked his way into my starting lineup. And uh, really pleased with the way he's going so far. Hopefully he will continue to improve. Riku Ring, we're trying to move on as well. We've got quite a few players we're trying to move on, which is why I hope that we're going to get a decent budget next year so we can actually bring in some quality players. Uh, Stuart Atkinson didn't play for me this year, but obviously I had to have him at the club because we had other players out on loan, other goalkeepers. Anton Bridge is a player that I brought up from the youth squad. He's got potential of seven, you know, kind of low to mid 70s. So we'll send him out on loan next season. Hopefully his physical stats improve. Otherwise, uh, he'll be pretty much a waste of a player but regardless Lucas uh, Lucio Reyes is a player I've tried to move on all year and nobody seems to want to sign him either Zafane obviously out at the present for five months with his ACL tear really unfortunate for him but he's been very solid for us pleased with him so far this season Michael O'Halloran uh, unhappy at not having too many too much football played at present he's disappointed at lack of matches but he's out at present with a broken ankle but he's been decent for us this year and uh, whenever he has played, obviously he was first team in the championship, but then we got Spaller in and he kind of stole the limelight a little bit from Michael O'Halloran. But uh, I can't decide whether I'll move him on or not. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Benny Kofobe scored five goals in his 14 games here on loan and got three assists. Okay player. 
not overly enthusiastic about his future at the club, I'll probably not follow him up. Atia, Filo, uh, Atia or Atila Fiola is uh, the centre back we brought in in January. Decent player, pleased with him. Three games he only played, though, due to uh, other players being uh, ahead of him in the pecking order. Michael Woods is currently out with a broken toe, but he's been my first team uh, centre mid alongside. Uh, Aquadar and uh, really pleased with how he's coming along although he isn't really improving too much now but still he's a decent player and then we've got a couple of players out on loan Joe Dunk is uh, another youngster we brought up unfortunately not grown at all this year which is quite disappointing Andrew Moat on the other hand is growing quite nicely up to 63 rated now at the age of 19 and uh, hopefully he will continue to grow next year if I send him out on loan again. So that is the state of the squad right now. Fingers crossed we get a decent budget, and of course I will uh, show you that at the start of the next episode for the transfer targets for the fifth season, and uh, hopefully we can have a decent, uh, decent fifth season, a decent second season in the BPL. We'll look to try and improve the squad with some really good signings, and fingers crossed we can have another successful season and challenge for those Europa League spots. But that is going to be all for today. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Drop the video a like if you enjoyed it. It really helps my channel out and of course subscribe if you haven't already to make sure that uh, you don't miss out on any future content but for now for uh, for this Wednesday evening episode that'll bring today to a close thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time